I am Adil Kumar and in this video we will have a few examples and you need to identify whether these examples are for direct relation, inverse relation or neither, right? So some of them could be for neither also, right? So what I will do here is first I will sketch few graphs for you and from those graphs you have to figure out whether these are the examples of direct variation, inverse variation or neither right so here's the first one so the graph of this is kind of going like this the second one is that the graph is is kind of like this and the third one is with a graph which is kind of like this now you have to identify from these whether they are direct variation inverse variation or neither right so so when I'm giving this axis, we'll assume this always to be x, that to be y, right? So I need not write them, but that will be always assumed. Is it okay? So anyway, here let me write all this for you. So think about it. Out of these, which one is direct, which one is inverse? Do we have any? Or they're all neither, right? So if you look at these graphs, we can figure out that this one is not direct since it is a straight line but it does not go through the origin so it cannot be direct so it is and it cannot be inverse because it is a straight line so straight line could be a direct relation or not a direct relation correct so this one does not go through the origin so it is not neither I should say okay it's neither of these two Correct? In this case, it goes through the origin and it's a straight line. Since it is a straight line goes through the origin, it has to be direct. And here, what we observe here is that the graph will never go through 0, nor will it reach x-axis or y-axis. And from the shape of it, it seems to be inverse. We see that as x increases, y decreases, and as x decreases, y increases, correct? So, so the reason for our selection here is that this is linear, not through origin, is that therefore it is not direct, right? This one is direct since it is linear through a region. Therefore it is direct. It is inverse since it is it follows reciprocal function. What I'm trying to say like 1 over x graph and as x increases I should say as x increases y decreases and vice versa as x decreases y increases right and second neither one of them they are all approaching zero neither one of them has zero value okay so that is how from the graph you can make out that your functions are direct or or inverse now let's take up equations so let me write some equations and see if you can figure out if uh, if I write x times y equals to constant, what will this equation lead to? And if I write y over x equals to constant, what will that equation lead to? Well, if the product is constant, in that case the relation is inverse. And if the ratio or proportionality is constant, then it is direct. Is that okay? So that is a simple way of looking at it. We can always rewrite this as y equals to k over x and this one as y equals to k times x. Now it is kind of easy to figure out. Is it okay? But if I have a relation which is, which is y equals to 
2x plus something then it is neither is it okay then it is neither because that one is translating the y and so that one does not go through origin correct now from table of values let's try to figure out from the table of values how do we find direct and partial so so let me write down few values and uh, let us say let's make this question slightly different so we want to write values which will support direct relation and in this case, we want to write values which will support inverse relation. Correct? Now, if I write here, let's say 4. Uh, okay, so let me write down x and y values. Okay, x and y values in both the cases. Okay. Let's write down 4, 4 and 5. 4 and 5. Okay. Now, what I want to do here is... I want you to write two set of values to ensure that this set is for inverse relation and this one is for direct relation. What could be those values? Okay, if I increase this, let us say, so, so if I write here, for example, uh, 5 and if I write 6 here, what could be those values? Well. If I want this relation to be direct relation, in that case, the ratio y over x should be constant. That is key. Is it okay? The ratio y over x is constant. So we have to keep that in mind. And if I want this to be inverse, then the product x, y should be constant. Do you get an idea? Right? So, so that is how it should be. So therefore, to keep this ratio constant, if I write these values, what will these be? So that's kind of a very tricky question. So what I will do here is, I'll calculate on the side for these values, since I just randomly wrote and they are not so easy to work out. So what we get here, k value is equals to y over x, which is 4 over 5. Is it okay? So that is the k value, y over x. So this value should be same. If we don't know this value, let's say here we have y1. To find y1, 4 over 5 should be equals to 4 is the y value, x5 is, I'm sorry, it should be 5 over 4. So I'm sorry, this is wrong. So it is y over x, right? Let's redo here. So for direct relation, let's redo here, direct relation. k is equals to y over x. Now in our case, y is 5 and x is 4. So it is 5 over 4. And that is, k is a constant. So in this case, we are given the x value as 5. So what happens here is that we can replace this value by 5. So we get y over 5, the x value, should be equals to 5 over 4, correct? And that gives you y value as 25 over 4. Do you get it? So this value should be 25 over 4. It's not an easy value to get, okay? Now what should be that value? We'll do exactly the same calculation, okay? x is 6, 6 for us. In that case, y over 6 is 5 over 4. So the value should be 6 times 5, cross multiply, right? So it is, it gives you, let me write here, uh, y equals to 6 times 5 over 4, right? That can be simplified. So 30 over 4 or 15 over 2, right? 30 over 4 or 15 over 2. So this value will be, 15 over 2. So those are going to be the y values. Do you get it? All right. So, so this is the calculation part for filling up these values. Now for the re inverse relation, 
I'm not getting into these details, right? <clears throat> I'll give you a question which will uh, make you think about it. But here, what I'll choose is that I need product to be constant, right? So in this particular case, uh, 4 times 5 is equal to 20. So I'm looking for numbers whose product is 20. So I could write a value which is, let's say, 2 and 10. That will give me 20, right? I could also take negative values, both negative. That's important to understand. We can take negative values also, right? So we could take minus 10 and minus 2. When you multiply these two, you again get 20, right? So still a inverse relation, correct? So in inverse relation, we could get a graph which could be on the other side also, right? So, so that is how we can build on the values to make that relation as inverse or direct as shown here in this video. I hope that helps. Now, as a test, since we worked on these fraction values here, let me write down a number which will give you a hard time in finding the x value. Uh, let us say that number is not a multiple of, of 20 and I'm writing a 17 as a number for y. If y is 17, find the value of x. So let this be the exercise for you. I'm Manil Kumar and I hope this video helps you to capture what we have learned about direct and inverse relation. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.